Um, let's, so let's start then. Can I welcome you to this uh, roundtable event, uh, All Change? Uh, and as it turns out, as far as we know, it has been All Change. Uh, I'm, I'm Sean Hanley, and I am a Senior Lecturer in Comparative Central and East European Politics, and I'll be chairing. Uh, we have three uh, distinguished uh, uh, speakers uh, and analysts on uh, Poland and Central and Eastern Europe who need no introduction either at CIS or uh, generally, but I'm going to uh, introduce them anyway. Um, on uh, my right, on your left, Professor Alex Jerbiak of the University of Sussex. Um, to my left, your right in the middle, Tomasz Dyszkiewicz, uh, formerly a uh, professor at CIS, now at the Aston Business School. And on my extreme left, your extreme right, uh, Professor Jan Kubik, who is the director of CIS. And I think the format is that each of the speakers is briefly going to um, talk for uh, 10 minutes, starting with Alex, uh, covering political, uh, economic, uh, European, and social and cultural um, themes about what the election results mean, where Poland is going, what it will mean for the EU. And I think then we'll throw it open to, uh, to questions. Um, the event will last about uh, 90 minutes, and I'm told, and it seems to be the case, that there is wine and refreshments available afterwards, I assume in the Maserit room. This has all been organised um, yes, by... Yes, it is. Organised by fairies or elves or without me knowing about it, but it has all been organised. Chloe. 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 Uh, so, um, we'll be delighted if you join us over a glass of wine or orange juice um, uh, after the event. Hobbits. Hobbits, maybe. Okay, um, so uh, we'll turn first of all to Alex Sturbeck, who I hope is going to tell us what the results actually are, or give us a good yeah. approximation. Well, I don't know. I hope if anybody out there knows the results, because when I looked just before I came in, they hadn't been announced. So they, they should really be on the panel rather than, than me. But I think we've got a reasonably good idea. Um, well, thank, first of all, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be um, back at CIS. I say back at CIS because we've been doing these Polish electoral roundtables since 2001, when it was an absolutely packed room full of people all wanted to know who on earth Sama Obrona was, which seemed a very important question at the time. Um, I was a bit frightened the other day because Sean told me that the last one we did, in 2011, he, he actually recorded, and it's kind of up there somewhere in the ether, I listened to it with great trepidation, listening to which of my predictions had all turned out completely wrong. And, um, and thankfully, my strongest prediction was the demise of the Palicot movement, so and the rapid demise. So that 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 came true. So I relaxed after that. Um, usually, also when we've done these things, um, then uh, they've also been some kind of later in the week. So it's given us an opportunity to to actually give people the results, never mind to actually analyse them. So um, I think the difference this time is obviously not only do we not know the results, we're still kind of processing these things a little bit in our heads. So these are going to be sort of very provisional thoughts really, certainly certainly on my part, it's, it's, it's not necessarily organised. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to comment on and, and, and explain the election results. Um, but then I also, the other thing I want to do is, is because I'm, I'm supposed to be a political scientist and not just a pundit, I'm going to try and make some comments about what the election tells us about some of the sort of longer term trends, the longer term trajectory of, 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 of Polish politics. Um, and I'm going to look at some of the, the results and some of the, the interesting ones and, and, and try and sort of reflect on this. So to start with, with the results, well, the big story, obviously the big headline story, is the, the stunning <coughs> success of, of, of PiS, the, the, the Law and Justice Party. Um, at the moment, it's, it's on the cusp of actually being the first party ever in post-1989 Poland to, 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 to win an election with, a, with an outright majority, okay, which that would be historic if it was to to do that. Um, uh, in, in fact, to be honest, I'll, I'll go into this in more detail, people are interested, even if it falls just short of that, I think it's, it's clearly going to form a government and, and, and I think it's, it's, it's going to be able to, to, to get enough support to, to form a government and, and in my view, enough will be able to peel away deputies from some of the, the, the smaller right-wing groupings, the Cookies Movement in particular, to, to, in my view, give it a working majority four years. So it may finish on one or the other side of the line, which in historical terms will be important, but in practical terms I don't think it makes a, a, a huge amount of difference. I think there are two factors. If you're trying to explain this election result, there, there, there are two factors of work, at work in, 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 in my view. Um, the first one is that the, the main driver of Polish politics um, in recent months, and, and the dominant narrative 
of this election is, is disillusionment with the political establishment. It's, it's a feeling that it's a time for change and, and a deep-seated disillusionment with the Polish political establishment, much of which has been not surprisingly directed at, at, at Civic Platform because it's been in government for eight years, which for many voters, especially younger ones who used to represent a, a core electoral constituency for, for PO, represents uh, an, an out of, t it exemplifies this kind of out of touch political elite. Distant, complacent, cynical, disconnected from ordinary people, tainted by, by scandals, um, like the tape affair, which, which, which at best show the, the, the cynicism of the ruling elite and, and at worst suggest there might even be corrupt practices at, at stake. So it's a, a disillusionment of, with, with, with the ruling elite and um, a scepticism about the, 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 the triumphalist rhetoric um, that the Polish elite has been using, um, both about the, the success, the, 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 the apparent economic success of the, um, of the civic platform government and more generally about the success of Polish transition in the last 25 years. And, and this is, for some people, a real puzzle of the elections. Why is Poland, which is the sort of the poster boy of, 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 of transition for many people, why is this government, which has presided over economic growth, the only EU state not to, to go into recession during the Eurozone crisis, able, not able to, 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 to perform better? And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that many people don't feel like they've shared in this success, particularly when you get outside of, of, the, of the bigger towns, particularly a lot of young people who face the choice between unemployment, working on short-term, what are called junk contracts, um, of um, having to live at home, not being able to, to, to afford their own home, of having to, to move abroad in order to, 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 to get a decent job, and a job that, that, that is, is well paid, but very often well below their educational qualifications. Um, so, um, and, and I think it's, it's this, it's interestingly that the question of migration to the West, the opportunity to work in, in Western labour markets, which for many Poles was and, and still is the, the, the great prize, if you like, of, of, of joining the European Union, um, has also become, in terms of domestic politics, something that exemplifies this, this narrative of, of disappointment. Um, to put it crudely, if things really are so good, as, as the government and the supporters of, of, of transition say, why is it that so many Poles have to travel abroad to work well below their, um, their qualifications um, uh, uh, rather than stay in Poland? Okay, so it's this kind of curious, this great success of transition and of European integration also exemplifies for many the failure of, of, um, uh, of, and, and the complacency of the ruling elite in proclaiming the success of the, the transition. The other key factor, I think, going on here, and, and that explains this, this amazing result, really, for law and justice, is the decline of the effectiveness um, of, of what I've, 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 in other places, called the politics of fear. Okay, this is the, uh, the ruling party's um, mobilization of, of voters, of, of its own supporters, of, of opponents of law and justice, through fear of... Um, of, of, of what will happen of, of, the, um, of the, the turbulent, um, allegedly turbulent and confrontational, uh, again, allegedly semi-authoritarian style of politics, which many voters have associated, rightly or wrongly, um, make no judgments here, with, 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 with the Law and Justice Party previously. And this has been an absolutely key element of every civic platform election campaign. When I, when I, I spoke at this roundtable in, in, in 2007, when they first beat Law and Justice, I said that, they, that, that it was a, a referendum on the government. Okay, the election was a referendum on the government. Four years ago, I said it was a referendum on the opposition. Okay, and this time, uh, it didn't work. Okay, it, it didn't work. And we had a hint of that with the Komorowski defeat, where you know, a big element of it was, was there. Um, and, and this time, it didn't work. In, sp and, and, and in spite of the you know, increasingly desperate attempts by the, um, the ruling party to, to play this. Again, exemplified probably by, by civic platform leader and Eva Kopacz's claim um, just before the election that Poland would, would, that law and justice would take Poland back 500 years. Okay, which, you know, I thought, well, if the election campaign's gonna go on any longer, she's gonna say they'll take them back to the prehistoric era, but also, which for a lot of Poles, 500 years ago was actually quite a good time. Because, you know, <laughs> Poland was the biggest country in Europe, so it didn't work very well. And there's a number of reasons for this. There's obviously, law and justice has, has made the political weather. It's, it's, it's worked hard to detoxify its brand by pushing second 
rank um, politicians to the fore, <coughs> most notably Bauta Shidwa's prime ministerial candidate, um, rather than, than, than Yaroslav Kaczynski, by focusing on bread and butter socio-economic issues rather than on its, its fourth republic um, agenda of moral and political renewal, never mind the Smolensk issue. And for many younger voters, of course, 2005-2007 is, is you know, a distant memory. So that's, I think, they're the two things that I think really explain the result um, and, and, and the, the, the success of law and justice. What about the terms of the, the longer term trajectory? Well, when I've, I've looked at this in the past, I've tried to examine this in, in, in terms of the, the sort of the duopoly um, of law and justice and, and civic platform, uh, which has kind of dominated Polish politics since 2005. 12 elections, I think it is, if you count midterm elections, they, they've dominated it and appeared at one point to be underpinning a kind of an increasing stability to the Polish party system. It's, it's a stability which, if you look at all the kind of measures that political scientists use to look at stability and instability of, of party systems, things like uh, levels of electoral volatility, the share of the vote won by the main parties, what's called the effective number of parties, all of these seem to be pointing in the direction of, um, of greater stability. Um, cemented, many say, by, by a party funding regime, a state party funding regime, which greatly favours the big parties and, and incumbents. And I sort of, you know, that's something I've analysed in the past. And against that, I put the fact that, that you know, the, the, the parties, that these parties have very weak links and still have very weak links with their supporters. Um, low levels of, of turnout, low levels of membership. Um, low levels of, of, of institutionalization again suggests that you know the, the party system might be more more fluid than, than than we imagine so what does this election tell us about that well obviously you know there are no numbers to crunch never mind having had time to to crunch the numbers um, but 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 there are some important indicators of, 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 of big political change um, which I think are worth analyzing the first of these is obviously the the, the, the massive collapse in support of civic platform. I mean, we don't have the final numbers, but it looks like it's going to be about 15% drop in terms of its support compared with four years ago. That's an absolutely huge drop in its support, and I think, I think, actually raises question marks over the long-term survival of of civic platform. This is a party, and one of the reasons for that is because over the years, it's kind of lost the ideological glue that held it. Together, it, it was always much, much weaker than, than, than in the case of the Law and Justice Party, which you know held itself together through eight long years of opposition. But over the years, it, it's turned itself from a party with, which was a sort of a moderating form of, of pro-market right-wing liberal party, gradually um, into uh, an, an all-encompassing centrist, non-ideological party of power. Okay, which was a, a very good strategy for, for, in, for, for gathering together a large number of voters around opposition to law and justice, but, but raises serious question marks as to the future of the party um, once it actually loses office, okay, and ceases by many to be seen as, as the most effective vehicle to do that. In, in short, you know, what happens to a non-ideological party of power when it loses power, okay, which is the problem that the civic platform faces. So it's, it's a crushing defeat, but one which I think raises question marks over that, over that party's long-term survival. The second thing the election shows us is, once again, that the, 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 the Polish party system is not immune to new entrants. Okay, there are new, last time, you know, we saw, for all this apparent stability, we saw, you know, um, uh, we saw um, uh, Janusz Palikot, you know, come from nowhere to finish third with 10% of the vote. Um, well, again, you know, we've got new political forces, Pavel Kukis, the rock star, come social activist who seems to have got in with about 10% of the vote. Richard Petru, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the liberal economist, the, the leader of what... Edward Lucas last night, I was at a debate, called it the World Bank Party. Um, he seems to have got into to Parliament. But also, you know, even going lower down the order, you know, new, new, new political parties like, like Partia Razem, the, the, the radical left party together, seem to have, have, have you know, been able to break through. So this, this cartel is, is not impregnable. You know, clearly new entrants can break through, even, in, and, and this election has provided us with further evidence of that. And the, the third sort of big indicator of, 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 of change in the Polish party system, um, which requires some sort of comment, is the, 
um, is the demise, the apparent demise of the Polish left. Okay, the, 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 I mean, we don't know yet. It, it's the final results show. It's, it's not entirely clear whether the United Left, the alliance of the, the Communist Successor Party and, and Palikot and a few other smaller forces, have crossed, have just been managed to get over the 8% threshold for parliamentary representation. Looks like they kind of probably hasn't, but, but, but and if, 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 if that's the case, this is a party that, you know, remember in 2001, won over 40% of the vote. This is, this is kind of hugely significant. Um, and there are very specific short-term reasons for this. Okay, the, the fact that, that the radical left together party, Partia Razem, was because of the performance of, of one person in one debate able to pick up a, a slightly larger share of, of the vote than it thought it would, which looks like it's the difference between it getting into Parliament. It looks like Barbara Nowatska, who was going to be the sort of messiah of the Polish left, didn't quite turn out like that. Um, the, you know, once she was subjected to, to kind of exposure, they, she didn't turn out to be so promising. But I think there are also, um, there are also kind of more fundamental things going on here. Um, and the, the, the fundamental problem is that the two, that the two constituencies that the, that the left traditionally appeals to um, are, 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 are mutually exclusive rather than mutually compatible. Okay, this is the key problem. In, 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 in Western democracies, the, the political left is made up of an alliance of, of, of people who are left-wing economically and socially liberal. Okay, in Poland, a lot of social liberals are also economically liberal. Okay, they vote for people like Petru. Okay, or they voted for Civic Platform. Okay, a lot of people who are economically leftist are also socially conservative. Okay, and end up voting for the Law and Justice Party. So this is a problem for a left that's trying to put to marry a constituency of economic leftists and, and social liberals. Okay, because because most people who are who are liberals are economic and social liberals. Most people who are economic leftists are also very socially conservative. Some parties in the region have cottoned on to this. Okay, Robert Fitzo, for example, in, in, in Slovakia, just down the road, has worked out that most left-wing voters are socially conservative and actually quite nationalist, okay, and put together a successful left-wing party. The Polish left hasn't been able to do this. It hasn't been able to, to work out an appeal which sorts out these constituencies. So just to quickly summarise the last few seconds, the result, the election result, I think, is the result of um, a narrative of disillusionment and disappointment with the ruling elite, combined with the weakening effectiveness of, 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 of the politics of fear. In terms of the long-term trajectory of politics, three things that suggest, you know, quite radical change, a loosening of the duo duopoly, the, 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 the catastrophe of, 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 of civic platform, which places question marks over its long-term future, the continued emergence of, of, of new political forces able to break through into Parliament, and again, serious question marks, the, the crisis, the deep crisis, existential crisis of the Polish left, and, and again, deep question marks over its, um, over its future and, and, and what it's going to do. Okay, okay. thanks for that. Um, Alex, just an, oh, another panellist, can you just clarify who's in and who's out? We know that the left are post-communist social democrats are out. Cook is is in. Okay. So what do we know? Well, we know that, that law and justice have, have won. Um, we don't know whether they've got an overall majority. We know civic platform have um, fallen by about fifteen percent to about twenty twenty-five percent. Cookies is in with about nine ten percent. Richard Petru is in with about six seven percent. Um, the peasant party look like they're in just over five percent. <laughs> Um, the left are, are currently on about 7.5%, but there's still a few districts left to declare, although apparently the districts that, that are declaring are not ones that are good for the left, I've, I've been told. And Janusz Korwin-Mika, it looks like he's not going to get in. He's on about 4.5%. Okay. Oh, and the, the radical left party, Partia Razem, looks like it's on just under 4%, so about kind of 36 it just says that, that London and Ursinov have not sent the results. So London, London is not terribly lefty, but Ursinov might. That means that Corbyn may well get in. Exactly. Yeah. Are there many I'd be surprised if it did. big turnout in London? Or if no. It won't make no. a difference, will it? No. 60,000 okay. votes. 20,000 votes. Okay. Um, I am just going to. I am just going to say that before we move on, we've got three seats here: one here, one here, and one here. Those of you familiar with the building who are standing you may want to. Pete, you may want to go and borrow a chair from the uh, junior common room. So we'll. Um, just one minute.
down here if anyone wants it. I always find it useful <coughs> to draw. So if you if you just let me do this. So basically, this is if you are doing political science or or or, or sociology, this is not a surprise. You may place conservatism here. So here you will have basically kind of market based view on the economy and then basically social traditionalism. Then if you go to extreme on this corner, you get liberal, libertarians, they basically um, market plus radical social progressive views on the world. Then this is kind of modern left uh, or liberal left, you may say. And this is kind of traditional left, which is social conservative, but uh, economically here, we have state here, we have the market. So, um, if you try to place the Polish, the major Polish parties on this, then law and justice is clearly somewhere here. It is socially conservative, in terms of its economic views, is somewhere in the middle. It's, it's difficult to say because there is a problem, because typically the rhetoric is more to the left, but while the record of what they did when they were in power was a was little more to towards the market, so it's actually... If you think about uh, civic platform, the people who just uh, lost elections, um, they would be, at the starting point about eight years ago, they would be somewhere here, um, more towards the market and more towards liberal view on, on social issues. During the time of those eight years, the last two, three years, they moved kind of this direction. Um, much more in the center, and much more liberal, liberal views on social issues. Um, if you ask, and here is comes something interesting, if you ask a question where the public opinion is, the public opinion is somewhere here. So basically some people, this, there's, there's a famous joke going on around Poland last week or two, that basically civic platform became like a PR agency and they just read the latest social polls and they try to implement the policy that match what people think. So, of course, that creates a problem because then you have a drift. But actually, most of the people were in views were in line what Civic Platform was doing over the last few years. And the economic results are qu quite good as well. So, what happened? I think what happened is basically that, that politics is, 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 is driven by chance and technical skills as much as it's driven by ideology. I cannot explain any other way what happened. So what happened was about a year ago, there was this famous um, case, famous in Poland, where basically somebody recorded some of the private conversations of, of, of the government, and clearly the civic platform did not under, they simply they did underestimate the impact of that. There was, this was very clear. That was still the time that Donald Tusk, who is now in Brussels, uh, pronounced this Donald Tusk, uh, yeah. <laughs> he was still in charge and clearly he underestimated that not learning for example for the lesson of the Hungarians who basically were the similar thing led to disappearance of the socialist party right? mm -hmm. some conversations which were basically recorded and then made public so um, the, to, to, to be fair to civic platform they realized the mistake about 3-4 months ago they sacked some of the people who were then in the government but 
then it was a damage limitation exercise. It did probably help because about three, four months ago they were on the way out in a real sense, not as, as they look now, but it was simply quite late. Um, that also, uh, there was also another thing which helped a lot, I think, in terms of law and justice, because their problem is this, they, there's about 25% of electorate which is with them, in terms of conservative social view of, of the world. And uh, they, one remarkable thing about them, and this is why if I would make one prediction, I would say this party will stay in Poland for quite a long time, is basically they succeeded to have a very strong, consistent political base of support. And there's no question that this one has disappeared. It's about 25% of the electorate, and interestingly, even if there is generational change and all this, it stays about the same. The, the, the polls, the, the, the surveys I've seen yesterday night about people who voted the same way for different parties shows remarkable consistency for law and justice. About 25% of Polish voters basically vote law and justice regardless. Why? Because simply for them, the, the social conservative issues is the key issue and therefore they will support them. Um, however, the, what did help them in the last months or two was simply the migration crisis. That's, that's my view of, of, of what happened. The reason why is basically it shifted the, 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 the discussion. Um, because if we think about some other issues you may call progressive versus traditional, clearly the majority was still with civic platform. There's no question. You can see the polls, you can see where the public opinion was. However, on migration, even if Poland is not really um, kind of extreme in terms of, 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 say, negative views on migrants, if you look at the surveys, there's actually Poland does not look that different from quite a few West European countries. And much better on this scale, if you call it better, than, say, Romania and few others in, in the Balkans. However, still the, 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 the fault line is somewhere closer to the center. And that became a big thing over the last month or two in Poland, and that helped to kind of shift the axis which helped law and justice a lot. Because the discussion was no longer about abortion, the discussion was about migrants, and then simply here they have far more clear, uh, larger support on this issue. But I don't even think that was the major factor. I think the major factor was simply a disaster, which public relations disaster that was uh, generated by the, the scandal of the tapes and civic platform was not responding. So in fact what you see is that the current, my opinion is that the current elections simply do not quite um, reflect the, 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 simply the, the political views of the polls. They do reflect history or recent history last two years and, and this is, that creates um, that created several interesting implications. One of them, because the civic platform moved to the, you may say, to the left on both the economy and the social issues, <coughs> they squeezed out a little bit the, the, tra the traditional left. And of course, another political disaster from the left point of view was that, in fact, even if they managed to, to, to if they succeeded to create a coalition, that coalition left outside uh, quite a significant chunk, and Alex was already talking about it. So, you, if you see how many votes were simply, they were short of how many votes, because in Polish law, under Polish law, it's 8% is, is a threshold for the coalition. So, they, they are now at 7 and 5, and the other leftist party was at, I call them leftists because they, they are kind of, it's a very interesting party, and it probably is a future for the, for the, for the left, because they, for the first time, you have a left in Poland which is not associated with post-communism, which was one of the factors which basically left many people not voting for, for the left alliance, because simply the face of the left alliance until very recently was Leszek Miller, who was a former uh, secretary of the Polish Communist Party, which is kind of embarrassment for many people. So, at the, at the, at the moment, you have actually, there is some future for the right, for the, for the left, because there is a new force emerging, but Again, it will take some time because now they are at four percent. Or they may not even be them, but but it's very clear that the left is changing. Nevertheless, civic platform moving here simply squeeze out the left because took away some of the support. 
by moving left, of course, they gave some the, the, the right gain some ground because that's unavoidable. So this this part that explains that, even if it's. But but there, there's another risk for them for the civic platform. I think they actually did remarkably well. The 24 percent, I would I would say, given where they were, and remember the 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 the. the, the Electoral campaign in Poland is one of the most interesting, probably the most interesting that ever happened in Poland because it was so long. And it was to first, the, it's almost one year. It was first the presidential elections, then the parliamentary elections. And a very interesting one with quite a few twists. And at one, at one stage, it looked like Platforma would simply disintegrate after the, after the, the presidential elections because the, the, the law and justice has real momentum. They were on the way down in, in, in pools, and then somehow they recovered some of the ground, except they didn't have enough time. The, the latest trends were actually they were going up just before elections. So um, the, the danger for them, however, is now that you have a party emerging somewhere here, which is, again, similar in terms of, of, of the social, the, say, progressive versus conservative axis, and farther to the market um, it's, it's just about where Platforma was, civic, civic platform was about eight years ago, right? And then you can see that some of the electorate simply moved there, and this is what is called Novoczesna, which is uh, Richard Petru, whom uh, Alex already mentioned. So they have a problem because this party has now 7.7 percent .7 of vote, and it just was organized several months ago. And basically, it also it is a byproduct of the same issue of of frustration that was caused by this perception of sleaze, corruption, uh, civic platform not responding to it, and that was a very powerful image of the politicians uh, splashing money on on uh, on uh, food and then uh, discussing politics in a very cynical way and making deals which are quite embarrassing. Um, the, 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 to give you an example, because I presume not all of you follow this, um, you have a head of the Polish National Bank this make trading with, with one of the ministers uh, that he may relax monetary policy uh, in exchange of firing the, at that time, Minister of Finance. If that would happen in the US, that gentleman will probably be in deep trouble or even go to jail. If that would happen in Britain, the same gentleman will, there will be a parliamentary commission, it will take about five years, and then, uh, he will be, he will be, his, his, <laughs> I will, I'll say no more. But in any case, he will have, in Britain, he will have no future. Britain is a more liberal country than US, but, so he will probably not go to jail, but he will have no future in politics, that's for sure. Well, in, in Poland, he's doing well, still. Nobody's quite, and you know, this is this is kind of mistakes they made. With, and he was somebody who was, of course, appointed by, by civic platform. So, um, right, uh, what would you like me to talk about? I mean, I can talk about the economy. I can talk about the risky subject of foreign policy. I can talk about about where, more issues. Where would you place uh, Cookies Party here? Because it's a, mix, it's a mixing of everything. It's it's hard to categorize this party. But a lot of nationalistic. In, in another room. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a, it's a fascinating party, and here I agree 100% with Alex because I, I, I think they will disappear. We may both be wrong, but I think they will disappear. It's a fascinating protest party, uh, a lot of authenticity. I wouldn't dismiss them. You know, it's very easy to dismiss them because again, this is this is a the, this is a random collection of different people with very different views and some of those people unavoidably have quite embarrassing views but there is a lot of authentic movement which is again driven by the same frustration perceptions of what was the, the and one important thing is here is that basically and that was clear very clear yes already yesterday that they they said that they will support law and justice in a sense that they will simply they may support them on some issues but they said that they will not uh, form part of the coalition and their rhetorics is anti-establishment as an as, uh, establishment they see both parties because remember for platforma law and justice was also in the government and again those are two old parties so they they are their rhetorics was about establishment in which they included both main parties 
So uh, that would create a problem for rule and justice because actually I don't, I'm not sure how much they will, they could count on cookies. The the, the solution which already um, the chairman of Peace Laws and Justice hinted at was that uh, he will try to pull some people from cookies and basically because effectively they have no program, they have no apart from apart from demanding some change in electoral law and making it, it the same as in Britain, first past the post electoral rule, apart from that they simply have no program. And there is no exaggeration in it. Uh, so that means that they may disintegrate and that gives some hope to law and justice that they can pull some people and then extend this, this majority. But the situation for them will be very different and for more than one reason. One is, uh, so the civic platform, just to finish with them, their main problem is Novoczesna Apel, I would think, because simply it, it, they had no competition on that side, now they have competition on this side. The, the, the good news for them is basically the left seems will not be in the parliament, so they are, don't have to worry about that side. So it's mixed, and again, 24% as a result for a party which was in such deep trouble, I think that reflects very well on their, on their technical skills and, and survival skills. Uh, and they, they were down to 20 at one stage, uh, one, two months ago. So this is, this is their problem, kind of mixed. And of course the, 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 the law and justice problem is the following. Yes, they have at the moment it seems like they will have two votes majority, two votes majority. So clearly, uh, yes, they may pull some people from cookies and then increase this majority a little bit. I wonder how much of that may happen. The, the, the Polish Farmers Party said or declared that they will not go into coalition with them and given that they are on the margin of disappearing, I don't think they will do it. I think they have enough, enough sense of survival that not to go into coalition with law and justice unless they will kind of play end game and they will predict that they will disappear in five years time so why don't grab whatever is there to grab. You know, but then otherwise I don't feel that they will do it because this is for them it will be political suicide because simply they are already suffering from the fact even you know the, the their problem is that they are quite conservative, but they were never able to create any brand for themselves because they were in coalitions with just about everybody. You know, if you look at the way they vote, you know, they are quite traditional socially, they could follow a completely different path, they could become something like Say in Austria, in some other countries where the, 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 the conservative rights come from the farmers' parties, they could do it. But, but again, by their political choices, they simply didn't place themselves there and there are no real competition for law and justice because they are seen as somebody, again, with no, no commitment to anything. Slightly unfair, I would say, but, but, but this is how they are perceived. Um, the, the, so this, what, are, what will be the problem for law and justice? Again, two votes my, my majority. One thing we didn't talk about is basically it's not law and justice. The major factor behind their success is simply the fact that they actually managed to create a coalition. This is a coalition of all the rightist parties in Poland. Right? Well, not all of them. Of course, they, they left uh, Korwin Mikke uh, and I will not comment on him. But the... Um, but... Otherwise, they managed to, to, so, but this is also a danger because you see the problem is that now with such a slim majority, they will be different games and those people were kind of grinning, you know, they will just, they will, they, they will simply be bargaining within this block of parties and that may fall apart. It did happen in the past. Maybe the, the, the fact that they are, they will cling to power, it will stick it together, but given that some of those parties are quite sensitive about their identities, it may well fall apart. That's one danger. The other danger, which we don't know yet, is Senate. Because with 37.7 support, the Polish Senate, which has a right to vote, to veto, to vote and to veto uh, the lower chamber legislation, and then you have to have strong majority, that one is driven by the British system. So it's first past the post. <coughs> and if you look at the uh, different regions, that I don't know. Probably law and justice will actually win as well, but uh, but I would not take it for granted because this is where you simply 
that, that and it's very clear in some of the districts that you know that there were less candidates and people were aware of of the system and therefore so we'll see but but finally the problem is that uh, that on many issues uh, you see there was they, 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 their electoral campaign was done it was a masterpiece because they were they were over the last few months it was a masterpiece because they they had a very difficult task they had to appeal to their hardcore <coughs> when I say hardcore I don't say it in a negative way I just say it as a, again this group who always vote for them they had to appeal to this hardcore electorate and then they also had to appeal to the wider audience and you know they were they were they doing it very in a very clever way just to give you an example then about when was it? About half a year ago, uh, one year ago, they, 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 they put a motion in the parliament on uh, absolute uh, uh, of law which would punish abortion in all forms what together. And that was, in, and all of them voted for this. Except that they were fully aware that it would not happen. Simply, there was no way it would happen in the Polish parliament because at the time they had 130 votes, and there was nobody else supporting it. The, the, the farmers' party was a little bit split, but generally there was no support. By doing that, they, they, they scored significantly with 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 the kind of this kind of hardcore conservative electorate, which would be probably even more than 25 percent. Support for Pol in Poland for such a move would be maybe 15 percent, 20 percent. I don't know, but not much. Uh, I don't remember the exact figures. But from that point onwards, they became completely silent about any social issues. And the, 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 the latest campaign, the civic platform actually tried to play it against them, tried to ask them questions, it was very clear in the public discussions, they simply kept silent. They didn't simply give any answers. Why? Because they realized that what, is the, what are the public opinion surveys. So I don't really expect they will make a move on this. But again, you can find the same thing in the foreign policy because, you know, pro-Europe, anti-Europe, they will you'll find the same thing on a few other issues where they will have to find a fine line between l keeping the majority that they have now, which is very slim, and then uh, simply um, keeping their identity, their correct electorate. So the, the situation will be quite different, quite difficult. Um, can we can, yeah. we can we move up before you sort of put foreign policy on one side and, and come back to it because um, I'm, I'm slightly conscious of it and um, I'll just turn to Jan now and you are, I don't know what you're speaking about but um, <coughs> um, um, well I will follow um, some of the um, themes that were already started with at, at here and there by my own twist. Um, one thing is, if this is something that I keep going for years, this is the illustration of the composition of the vote, not of the seats in the parliament. But I, I use it to see how the map sort of changes. Um, up, this is the, this is the uh, left ex-communist parties, various, various variants. Uh, it is obvious that up to a certain point after the transition, this is a very popular uh, political force. It is not that suddenly after the 89 polls uniformly rejected all forms of leftism or communism. The party collapsed here under the weight of its own corruption and ineptness eventually, uh, but you know, shrunk to this size. What happens here has been the, uh, on this side, on the right side of the political spectrum, I, I don't know in how many debates I participated about the rise of the right, populist right in particular in, in, in Europe, and particularly in East, Eastern Europe, East Central Europe. And I was always showing this up to here, saying, well, not exactly, because if peace is more populist right and PO is more center right, what happens in Poland, obviously, that that center keeps growing from election to election, up to that point. So this is an earthquake. This election <coughs> changes everything. This party simply collapsed that the center collapsed, shrunk to this size. This is, I took the last numbers from a, a few moments ago. And what well, the green is the, the peasants that are surviving everything and somehow <laughs> managing to become a part of any coalition. I, I completely agree with that. 
Um, so uh, please keep this in mind. This is uh, a story of the last 25 years, which is very complex. The, 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 the reaction, the, the, I like to think about this phase after the collapse of the left as, as something new, as, as, as a new kind of, uh, it has its own dynamic um, and it, it needs to be analyzed separately. We have no time, you know, by contrast to what was happening here. Okay, so that's the, the kind of the general uh, picture. Now, um, let me share with you uh, several thoughts. Um, I am a political scientist uh, somewhat, and, and um, an anthropologist. Um, so I would take maybe a, a more kind of anthropological uh, take on all of this. But w what clearly happens is the total collapse of what is known in political science as the voting uh, theory, uh, the economic theory of voting. Uh, Polish sociologists and political scientists for a long time have been writing about it. The, this theory just doesn't work very well. And, and my friend Krzysztof Jasiewicz some time ago wrote a very important piece that was simply called a pocketbook or a rosary. And the rosary stands for uh, uh, the, the cultural cleavage ra rather than economic cleavage in, in, in Polish politics. Um, so being an anthropologist, I believe that culture matters. Therefore, I believe in something that is in political science called constructivism. <laughs> the way people construct the reality matters more than what reality actually is, as much as we can determine it. And actually, this is worth recalling in this building, that this idea comes to social science from, um, among others, uh, most prominently, Florian Zdaniecki, a great Polish sociologist who s brought this thought to Chicago, and the famous Chicago School of Sociology is built uh, uh, on this insight, uh, unfortunately, perhaps for Znaniecki, he collaborated with Thomas in this famous uh, five-volume work on the Polish peasant in Europe and America. Uh, is co-authored, um, uh, and of course Thomas put a lot of work into that. But what eventually functions in sociology is known as the Thomas theorem. Nobody remembers Znaniecki, and the Thomas theorem, if you go to any place uh, uh, on the web, uh, sounds like this. If men define situations as real, this was in 28, so there were only men, there were no women. If men define situation as real, they are real in their consequences. And this is the main insight of my work, and this is what drives my, my work uh, and many issues. So, what is the reality, as, as much as we can determine? It, it, you know, I spent the last few days looking again at the economic data. The Polish su success is phenomenal by all accounts, given where Poland was in, 1989, uh, in 1989. It, I, you know, many of you may, may know it, but it was in a catastrophic state, much worse than any other country of the region at the moment. Now, unemployment is in steady decline. In 1914, is 9%. The, uh, the EU average in 19, uh, 2014 sorry, was 10.2. <laughs> but what happens, the last few months, the Polish unemployment went down from uh, actually the last year, but from July 2014 to July 2015, went down from 8.7 to 7.2. Economic theory of voting would have said, well, in this situation, the, the incumbent party must win. The debt to GDP ratio, the issue raised all over the place, in Poland is about 50%. I don't know how many of you remember what it is for UK. The debt to ratio. Yeah, it's 88, and the EU average is 86. So Poland is a pretty healthy, uh, in a pretty healthy state compared with, you know, the averages. Uh, almost no inflation, and the real wages keep working. You get any statistics, either Polish or Eurostat, the real wages keep working. Poverty shrinking. Poverty, yeah, there I, I have all yeah poverty or the the threat of poverty is even shrinking. This is not to say that there are no pockets of real issues and real problems. Um, you know, the, the idea world was maybe up there, but, but not accessible to us. I don't want to trivialize it. There are serious issues, but by and large, a theory would have predicted even those numbers that the incumbent party should win. Now, if you are a constructivist like I am, and if I believe in those definitions of, 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 of reality as something important, the, the role of political rhetoric in those elections, as always, was tremendous. The, the, in a nutshell, the problem is this. Uh, there was one political zombie. A zombie is a walking dead, right? And this was the ruling party. For some reasons, they stopped saying anything interesting. Any, any what political scientists' framing of issues was gone. 
They were kind of moaning and, and doing, I don't know what. This was a bizarre dance of absence. Whereas the, uh, the uh, piece became incredibly good at their message, incredibly disciplined, and in a moment I, I will talk a little bit about uh, the, the, uh, what they did, how, how I see it. But one thing that was very general, for quite a long time, they were presenting Poland as the zone of disaster. Against all those numbers, you heard constantly the rhetoric that the, the Poland is a disaster. And just to give you one uh, example, uh, a few months ago, suddenly the uh, key people in the campaign started talking that PO, uh, the ruling party, incumbent party, deindustrialized Poland. After a while, they, they stopped talking like that, but for a while they did. Now, if you look at the numbers, uh, uh, Polish industry's contribution to GDP is 8% higher than EU's average. So, you know, uh, that's rhetoric, and that's the power of rhetoric, but, you know, many, many more uh, examples like that. Recently, they were saying that they will give 500 zloty to every couple for the second child. People who earn less than 800 zloty per person to the family, they will give 500 zloty to, for the first child. So this amounts to about two, 22 billion zloty. Everybody says this is absolutely impossible to do. Today, already, two politicians of peace said, well, maybe we're not going to do that, certainly not this year. So, you know, again, nothing unusual about it. Every party in the world lies like that, and every party in the world, maybe not that quickly, it's a few hours, the elections are not, but relatively quickly, says, well, not yet. Right? <coughs> so this is not unusual. I, I have this whole thing about deeper structural uh, cleavages. I, I don't want to take time, and, you know, what are the sources of those kind of, of this kind of bifurcation of Poland. Uh, it is something that I have a a great interest and in, maybe we can come back to it if we have time, but there is in the middle of this kind of polarization between more nationalistic and more kind of cosmopolitan Poland, I don't know how, I don't have good labels for that, there is of course the cookies phenomenon. I, I said that maybe it's another room. But if we go to this other room, what we will see is amorphous, culture, amorphous culturally amorphous political rebellion. I, I, the, it is a rebellion, it is the protest vote, and actually, for those of you who follow the American politics, it, I, I, and I spent a lot of time still in the States, and so po Cookies is a Polish Donald Trump, in a certain sense. And you can, you can see uh, certain similarities, uh, ex except that, that Trump is smarter. But the incoherence of the message, in one case, because Cookies doesn't know what he's doing, it seems to me, whereas Trump's calculate, but the, the effect seems to be very similar. <laughs> Another quick point is the political geography. Many of you might have studied those famous maps, which I am almost obsessed with, that the borders of the uh, elections are very much showing the borders of Polish partitions of the 19th century. Everything indicates, we don't have the final map, that it collapsed. The success of peace is absolutely amazing. They won, in, as far as we know now, in all age categories, in all education categories, and they won all types of uh, settlements, meaning they won major cities. They won in Warsaw, although one argument is that they won in Warsaw because of Chicago and London. I just checked, London votes have not come in yet, so I'm not sure how London tends to vote, but maybe not that much uh, different from Chicago, but I don't know. Very different. Different, different. okay. Uh, now, the migration crisis, it was mentioned, is tremendous and plays rhetorically a tremendous role, uh, role in this election. I also agree with Alex that disillusionment with the elites is a powerful uh, factor, but I would interpret it slightly differently. It is disillusionment with the elites, with one part of uh, in uh, taking part in those elections, hiding their uh, face a bit. In. A bit, and this is a piece. So the politics of fear, which I would rather see on the peace side than PO, although both of them have considerable achievements in this area, uh, and the politics of innuendo, which is the specialty of, of uh, uh, Jaroslav Kaczynski, was withdrawn, was suspended, very skillfully for the last uh, few months. So on the one hand, you have a political zombie, a living dead, kind of stumbling around without much sense. Um, on the other hand, you have the exhaustion with the political elite, and this is the old problem in Polish politics, going back all the way to the early 90s, 
tremendous arrogance of intelligentsia that they should be simply supported and voted for because they are so wonderful. So they, they are arrogant, but on the top of that, over the last several years, maybe because of eight years in power, the part of the, of the elite simply, as Stanisław Wyspiański, the great Polish neo-romantic poet, put it, they do not want to want. They just sort of gave up. There is another element of all of this. Uh, there are some elements in this economic picture that I portrayed, some negative phenomena here and there that one can skillfully uh, exploit. There is a gigantic problem of migration, meaning Poles leaving Poland, no doubt about it. Uh, there is, though, what I think is even more important, the revolution of rising expectations. Mm -hmm. There is quite a few people talk about it in technically this called the relative deprivation theory. I, I study politics of protest and social movements. The theory is kind of discredited, but I always thought that it has, from time to time, it works. And I, I have the sense that the, the rising uh, standard of living produced the dynamic of rising expectations, which, you know, literally, Poles are some Poles, that these are beginning to think, well, this should be Germany now, 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 like tomorrow, or even today. And it's still not there, it's 60 some percent of what Germany has, although it's a tremendous rise. Over the last 10 years, it is 20% from 40 something to 60 something. But it's not enough, right? And this is well described in the literature the discrepancy between expectations and the ability of the system to, to meet them. Um, so, final thing that I want to uh, share with you in those remarks is some elements of this uh, hiding of the more off-putting behavior and personalities. Uh, uh, Macierewicz was ca carefully kept out of the picture. Kaczynski himself uh, uh, very precisely withdrew and uh, Beata Szydło was the, the, the face of the party. Um, already yesterday you could hear the voices, well, so she is going to be the prime minister. Well, maybe not, right? <laughs> we'll see. So the, the, even the existence of this, of this uh, uh, doubt or hesitation uh, indicates something. Um, what does it all mean? Right? Um, is it going to be the next Hungary? What, what is the nature of this non-liberal project? Uh, because it is a, a democracy, I have no doubt, but it is going to be a, 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 a mo quite possibly, not necessarily, a different kinds of, kind of democracy. So here's what I think about it. Peace uh, developed a, a, a magnificent really, at the moment, uh, a machine, and it is, in the sense, uh, on the right side of the spectrum, a catch-all party. It, is, it, has, it caters to several s niches or several parts of the Polish electorate. Now, so let me give you some, some quick examples. <clears throat> First, I always thought, Eckert and I wrote about it in our book about Poland many years ago, that um, when Polish, uh, and I literally observed it on the ground, uh, when I was in Poland in 1991, when the, the Polish political spectrum started splitting to the center-right, solidarity, put aside ex communist into center-right and more radical right, with Porozumienie Centrum emerging uh, with the Kaczynskis, the leader. And we were trying to think, how do you conceptualize it? It didn't fit as we said, left, right, this, the, you know, all traditional labels didn't work very well. We came up with the idea that peace eventually that emerges from that strength, from the center alliance, Porozumienie Centrum, is a revolutionary party. It is a party that constantly pushes, it pushes for continuous revolution. The public life needs to be cleansed, needs to be cleaned. There's constantly a job to be done to remove something, preferably ex-communists, which were not that easy to track down, and collaborators of the old, of the old regime to, from political life. The other side of solidarity went what we called procedural reformist path. Meaning, once you start building serious democracy, you have to follow the rule of law. Once you have the laws in place, it is not advisable to keep tinkering with them. Whereas for peace, it, was never, it is never an issue. If the law is, we don't like it for one reason or another, then we can fix it, we can change it. So those are two very different attitudes to, to law. And I think this is very important. So you have a revolutionary versus procedural party, more or less, more or less. Right? <clears throat> now, 
Second thing is one of those, if you recall the pocketbook versus the rosary, one of them is more religious, one of them is more secular, which takes us to the question of the role of the Catholic Church in all of this. Right? And the, 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 the Catholic Church plays a very important role in Polish politics, and increasingly, certainly over the last few cycles, started playing the role on the one side of the political spectrum. Right? So that's, that's something to, to keep in mind. You have then, when you look at the population, more traditional religiosity, and you have something opposite. I don't know what you could label for it. It's a more modern. This is a very religious country. And people, though, express their religious needs in many different idioms, but some of them are more traditional than the others. That somewhat corresponds to the, uh, this division. Men, men, most, almost all of my friends, uh, those who were supporting Pelo, I don't know if they supported in the last elections, were religious. Right? And they were in, often un, un, uncomfortable listening to the language of, um, that was coming from the altar, from, from a large portion of the Polish episcopate. Mm -hmm. um, then you have something more nationalistic versus something more cosmopolitan. And the question is whether this nationalism, which clearly underpins uh, uh, PiS's uh, uh, platform, is going to be aggressive, chauvinistic, or not. And the, the, the problem is, for example, of uh, infamous football hooligans. If, if those of you who follow Polish um, uh, calendar of, of celebrations, November 11th, this is coming up, is uh, Independence Day. And over the last few years, few years, certainly more so in a few other places, there, there were uh, rather ugly, uh, um, often uh, aggressive uh, demonstrations by football hooligans who clearly were expressing their sympathy for peace. And peace very rarely, although sometimes it happened, was distancing itself from them, right? You know, you do not, if you're a skillful politician, you're not going to lose any portion of your potential electorate. I understand that. But it has certain cultural and ethical ramifications. Uh, finally, uh, I'm not sure if it's final, but anyway, the next thing, a uh, very interesting thing in what I would call political philosophy in the pol pol politics of uh, law, which takes you back to this uh, revolutionary versus reformist distinction, which I find useful. So the, the, you have the spirit of republic, rep, republicanism versus the spirit of liberal democracy, right? And there are very, uh, there's, this is a very noble tradition, a, a, a true kind of conservative tradition of Polish republicanism, which has nothing to do or very little to do with the populist right. Uh, but it has, uh, uh, if I may say so, a, a, a certain uh, a danger in it for someone who is more believing in liberal democracy, and the word liberal here means the, the, the emphasis on the rule of law. Namely, from time to time, actually, I don't know, depends how often you would read that stuff, but, but you will find statements that the party that is called law and justice is more about justice than about law. Right? And of course, then they understand the justice according to their understanding of justice. Right? So substance takes over the uh, procedure again, and it sometimes uh, is expressed in the calls for extrajudicial mechanisms or some additions to the existing uh, legal system that will fix problems in that system. This is an extremely dangerous type of activity, needless to say. Uh, another point that is in this tradition of uh, strong republic, which is translated into strong state, is executive centralization, and which is the weakening of the legislative branch and the emphasis on the more emphasis on the executive branch, which then leads to a certain uh, weakening, at least potentially, at least of the tr classical tri-division of power be, uh, among the three classical branches of the uh, 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 of the government. Um, on the cultural side, I don't know, can, can I take one more minute? One minute. I will turn it. One minute. One minute is on the, the vision of, of, of national culture, which is very important for me. Um, 
Uh, I, I do think, I lived in Poland 2006-2007 as the professor of Warsaw University. There will be uh, a change in the atmosphere and there will be uh, a, an attempt, I don't, I'm not sure how successful, to have a tighter governmental control over uh, bringing up young people, socialization and culturation. To, to build more kind of patriotic uh, uh, sort of um, uh, type of people. Uh, oh, in a certain understanding of patriotism, of course. I don't think there's one, but certainly many. So there will be more, if there's a prediction, there will be more, attempt, uh, freq more frequent attempts to control school programs and organizations. The role of the Catholic ch Church will be elevated. Uh, Pro-life position will become more domi dominant. Anti-gay positions will become more dominant. And the discourse, which is insanely inc incomprehensible to me, which is the discourse on gender, that there is something called gender that is going to destroy Poland. I never understood how it works. I'm an anthropologist, gender is an analytical category, like class, ethnicity, whatever. But anyway, here is this talk, which is a, a label for, for something that I do not fully understand, but the frequency of the usage of this frame uh, will increase. And there will be, although I am here not sure, but. There is an issue that the final thing I say, taking us to the domain of uh, foreign policy, not everybody, and it fluctuates over time, is uh, who supports peace, and certainly not all members of the peace elite are sort of uh, anti-European, straightforward. This is this would be not true. There are certain shades of Euroscepticism. Some people express it more strongly, some less, but. What is interesting, and this is the dynamic to watch, is that some part of the of the this this cultural political phenomenon called peace and its supporters is anti-German. Some part of it, and I heard it, I, I, I had those conversations, is anti-Russian, obviously, yeah, this whole thing with with the tragedy in Smolensk and all of, and all of this, you can see how it feels into that. Sometimes it's both, right? And as someone who somehow thinks that Polish um, safety and the future matters to me, I have to say that this is a little bit insane if you're in this place in Europe and you're beginning to go against both big neighbors, right? You know, what, what kind of thinking is this? You know, so, uh, but they will have to figure it out. Um, I, I think that President Duda is, has his first step visit to Germany was actually with some minor mishaps, pretty successful and calmed down at least part of the, the German um, uh, opinion making circles and government. So, you know, so far so good, but it, it, it very much depends who will take which position in the government. Right? And uh, this, of course, we do not know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Lord, Lord. Um, <laughs> Yet, um, <coughs> the panelists pr probably would like to comment on each other's um, contributions, but I think because of questions, time, questions. we will move on to questions. And um, I think we'll take them in threes. If you could uh, just briefly identify yourself and, and the institution you come from, and also bear in mind, I think this is being recorded, so if you don't want your voice to be recorded <laughs> from MI5 the, or the FSB, the whisper, well, uh, thought police. We have mentioned the dangers of being recorded when you don't know you're being recorded. Okay, so we'll take them through. So, I mean, and if you can keep them succinct, please, as well. François Guiné, Hebrew and Jewish Studies uh, here at UCL. Uh, we devolve, you devolve much space to the to the uh, various allegiances, but uh, nobody spoke about the very low uh, frequency of, of the vote, 50, around 50 percent, uh, which is, for Paul speaking, not so lit, so such a small uh, number, but still it's only every second uh, eligible voter voted. And, and uh, I would like to hear more about your take on the past 25 years of democratic evolution in Poland, that so few people actually engage in this, in this exercise. Uh, second question, I mean, uh, the, the, the strength of peace is, is, is obviously the, the, the weakness of the left or the other way around. Uh, so so the, the collapse of the, of the left is, is, I believe, a, a startling phenomenon which, which need, I, I think, further, further deeper analysis because uh, uh, from my perception, and I follow 
Polish politics from from not very close, but I follow it uh, steadily. There is there is a, there is a quite strong impact of liberal left wing views. There is a very strong left wing elites in in the big places in in, in, in institutions in, in wherever you go, but it doesn't translate into party efficient party politics, and and this is something which which I also think is is would require more analysis. Okay, let's take one more. Uh, go, yeah. go for it. Yes, please. Um, I was wondering if uh, you could comment more on the fact that three of the leaders um, and two of the uh, the leaders of the two biggest parties um, are women, um, and if this was in any way significant, it certainly seems um, quite remarkable in the region. Okay, and I think we can squeeze in one more, or maybe oh, yes. Hey, thank you. I'm Pete Duncan from SEAS. Um, the the yeah, very briefly. Um, are we returning to the communist system in the sense that the leader of the party, Jaroslav Kuczynski, is more important than the government? Um, and also, very briefly, um, the, when we talk about the left, I'm pretty confused now about what the left is. Is there really any, any basis, having heard people, having Veronica and others talk, mentioning the left, I mean, is there any basis for a socialist in the sense of the market left, or has it been totally discredited by the communist system? Bearing in mind that the official left, the left alliance, Krasniewski, who's uh, built, left the stone for this building, um, uh, was having been supposedly on the left, in fact was a, a big privatiser uh, when he was in power. And finally, the word prava, um, which Jan mentioned, prava, law, I mean, mm -hmm. does the word prava in Polish also have the same connotation it has in Russian, of meaning something also about what is sort of morally right as yeah. well as what is the yeah. law. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, so that's turnout, the left, women leaders, Kaczynski, power behind the throne. I don't know what's to start that one. Shall we um, put Tomek and then... Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll try to be short. Then, frequency. People vote, people go to vote when they have reason to go to vote. The 66% the turnout was in 1989 because something important was going on. That's a sign kind of, I would say, that's, I, I'm not, I do not want to trivialize it, but there's a clear correlation. In, in fact, the frequency was up in those, these elections. And, and now the interesting question is, 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 is to whom they voted. And what is clear, they voted for cookies. They voted for this new anti-establishment parties. The people who, who were not voting before, they simply voted for the anti-establishment party. That, that was what happened. The, uh, the left is fascinating. One, now the, there's a, something more general about Polish elections, which is basically that the traditional media influence, I think this is something for Sean. Sean would know much more about it, but I think the traditional media role is, the, is, is just diminishing. And it was very clear in Polish elections. There were some, the, nobody reads newspapers anymore, to put it simply. So most influential newspapers would read one thing, people wouldn't care slightest. That's, that's my short answer to this. And of course the media, the, 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 the kind of enlightened left is very influential in the media, but it matters much less than it did even a few years ago. Um, I think that Kwaśniewski is a wrong example because Kwaśniewski kind of moved, Kaczynski successfully kind of isolated himself <coughs> from the traditional left, uh, even of his personal history of being the apparatchik responsible for sport and hard drinking when he was in the, <laughs> in the uh, you know, the, the last communist government. You know, nobody took to take, take it seriously, but you know, the, the, you really cannot, and again, there are two reasons. If you think some, if you think someone like Miller, Miller, Leszek Miller was the oldish, Apparatchik with quite embarrassing political history as well, because he was at one stage he was desperate and he basically al uh, aligned himself with the self-defense, you know, this kind of uh, protest party. Then came back, and he until very recently was the le the, the, this, the, the, le the face of the left. You just cannot win elections with Leszek Miller. That's full stop. No longer. Part for the older generation, like say myself or you know, Jan, that's simply because we know who Leszek Miller is, and it's just, it's just a question of taste. For the, for the younger generation, simply because, you know, 
this is enough to see how he speaks and how he looks. We basically, he's not one of them. Um, the left will be created, I think. There is first sign of it. There is some interesting left appearing. The, 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 the guys who did this Razan party, and they, that was enough for them to appear in the public discussion. It gets about generally jump in about 3%. So double their vote about four times just for the, the, the fact that they had some prime time in the, in the TV that everybody watched. So there is a hope, but it will be different left, left parties and it will take time. Um, now, okay, may I say just one thing before I forget, and I will give it to my... Now, the, the, the Hungarian scenario will not happen. The, it will simply not happen because, for many reasons, but one simple reason is that the success of, of law and justice was not nothing near <coughs> success of Orban. So there was no chance that they will make the constitution, the executive branch stronger, that they will can tinker much with the, with the legal system. It simply will not happen. All this kind of doomsday scenario is not going to happen. They, they simply had no, even if they wish to, which I'm not sure, it's very difficult to, to understand. And finally, Kaczynski, Kaczynski, you see, Kaczynski role model is Marshal Piłsudski. You have to understand that. So he feels very happy with the situation he's now because he's responsible for nothing and he can intervene, he can play this, this leader of the nation and basically intervene here and there and then leave other people to take responsibility. This is not quite the communist model because because the, nobody is being shot or sent to Kulak, <laughs> but 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 it's it's more you know Piłsudski until his death was much more benign uh, regime. Um, yeah, some people were in jail, but no, it's, it was nowhere near that. Um, okay. Alex, do you want to share the mic? Can you mention women as well? Yeah, I'm going to mention women. Yeah. 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 with horror, we have Sorry, an all-male all panel, and we're going to get one of those David Hassel. Yeah. 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 We're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble. We are going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the thing about turnout, um, yes, um, I mean, turnout in Polish elections is, is really low. Um, you know, over 50% is a really good turnout in Poland. I did kind of mention this a little bit. <coughs> it's, it's one of the reasons why I said, I think, you know, that, that whenever, even when the Polish party system looks like it's stabilizing, um, you've got to bear in mind that you know lots of people aren't voting. They have no no connection at all with the parties that that, that appear to to be the dominant ones. So um, I, I think that's that's kind of really important. Um, political scientists have kind of looked at this. There's a big literature on election turnout, and there's quite a big literature on election turnout in in Poland. And nobody that I've seen has given an answer as to why there is a lower turnout in Poland than there is in other countries. They can tell you in great detail who votes and who doesn't vote. They can tell you about the demographics. They can tell you how these people would vote if they did turn out to vote, which is pretty much the same as the people who do turn out to vote, so it doesn't really make much difference. <laughs> um, but what they don't tell you is why it's so low in Poland. I mean, some people say because um, it's a kind of a you know, post-communist thing, because people in communist countries felt um, a detachment from the institutions of, 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 of the state, the, the mit, the oni thing that people talked about, them and us. If that was true, um, then you then got to answer why is that not the case um, in, in, in other post-communist states to the same extent. I mean, there's a lower turnout in post-communist states than there is in you know, Western um, European countries. But, 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 but there's an even lower turnout in Poland. So there's, there's, there's no answer to that, um, not in the, the political science literature. Still a very good question. On the collapse of the left, I, mean, I, I, I kind of dealt with that in my talk. The problem for the left is that it's got these two social constituencies and, and they, they don't overlap. Okay, so social liberals are also economically leftist. Um, social, if you're if you're if you're a leftist, if you want to be an economic leftist in Poland, um, your best bet is to become a social conservative as well. You know, don't yeah. attack don't attack the church. Don't talk about you know things like um, identity politics and all that kind of stuff. Steer clear of all of that lot, lot just like Robert Fitzsimmons does. That's 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 the big problem. And this is why I'm really dubious about, this is my prediction, <laughs> I'm really dubious about Partia Razen, the Together Party. I think that, that this kind of radical left niche is, is too much of a niche. I think, you know, there are lots of kind of young people um, who, who, you know, sort of young radical leftists, probably lot, lots of people who go to the university where I am and live in Brighton, the town where I live, but there's not very many people of these in Poland and certainly not when you get outside the the big cities and, and you know they kind of rallied themselves for the election but I think that's that going that way the kind of the integral left platform is not the way forward for the Polish left basically that's 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 the way to to, 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 to marginalization and, 
and oblivion, which you're not, you're not a supporter of the left, you might think it's great, but, but if you are, then, then you know, that's, not a, that's not a very good thing. I think on the women thing, um, yeah, I mean, it was commented on, um, it was commented on quite a lot in the, the Western media, you know, I did some interviews with people and they said, oh, it's quite interesting, you know, the three main political forces had, had you know, women leaders and, you know, the, the, the debates and all that kind of stuff, to some extent in, in Poland, but I think one thing I think that I would sort of say about this, which I think is important, is that although that, that's the case, I don't think you've got that kind of identity politics in Poland that you, that, that you would in, in other countries. So, for example, Beata Szydło was not made the prime ministerial nominee because she was a woman. Okay, she wasn't made that because she was, she, she was, she was the prime ministerial nominee because she'd ran Andrzej Duda's campaign, she was, you know, quite presentable, very kind of emollient character, a quite tough character as well, a little bit wooden, but that also made her appear quite steady. It wasn't because she was a woman. Eva Kopacz tried to play the kind of identity politics card to start with. Um, it was, it either didn't work very well, uh, or it was a complete disaster, you know, she tried to say, you know, well, my line on Ukraine is I'm like the mother who protects her family, you know, our family come first and all that kind of stuff. It was a complete disaster. So she kind of steered clear of that a little bit. So um, although, you know, it is, it's quite striking and, and, you know, particularly for sort of Western observers of these things, even more striking, it's not an indication that there's a development of any kind of identity politics in Poland. It's not like, you know, Hillary Clinton. Why, why should you vote for Hillary Clinton? If I talk to somebody and try and get them to convince me, you know, the first 49 out of 50 reasons are because we would have the first woman of the, of the United States, with very many of her supporters, other people would, would not say that. In, 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 in Poland, that, we're not in that kind of game. Okay, we're not in, in that kind of game, certainly not at the moment. Um, and just on the thing about the, the, the Pete race, I think, you know, we haven't really talked about this, um, but the, the, the fact that the, the leader of the party, the leader of the ruling party, is not the prime minister, is, I think, kind of hugely significant, okay? I'm, I'm slightly disagree with Tom, we've disagreed a couple of times already today because we've done a couple of panels of these things. I think this is a stronger government than, than, than he implies, um, and, I, and I think even if it doesn't get the majority, it will peel away, the cookies movement will fall to pieces very, very quick. There's absolutely no point trying to locate the cookies movement on a table like that because there's no content to it. Okay, you can locate Pavel Cookies where well, you can try, but, but it's, it's completely, the Polish word is przypadkowe, you know, it's kind of an accidental collection of people that's going to that's fall apart really quickly, and most of those people will be sucked in by law and justice. So de facto, they'll have a, um, a fairly clear parliamentary majority. The big problem that the government's going to have, I think it's going to have two problems. One is that, that, that basically it will have ranged against it the Polish establishment, the political establishment, the cultural establishment, the economic establishment, who, you know, after, a, they're shell-shocked at the moment, but they will come back with a vengeance, and they have very well connected with Western opinion-forming elites, and articles will start to appear about, you know, very, very critical, and at, that, at which point the domestic political elites will say, look, Poland's a laughing stock because these people are writing terrible articles about us in the FT. The Economist, that's going to be a big weakness. But the other big problem that they've got is this thing about, you know, the party leader and the, and the prime minister are, are, are going to be different people. Um, and even, even best case scenario, that's going to be problematic, that you've got two power centres. Worst case scenario is there'll be an outright conflict between those two, which will end in Beata Szydło being removed as prime minister like Kazimierz Maciejkiewicz was removed. So, you know, there's, there's, there's no good outcome to this, I don't think. There's only a, 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 a bad outcome and a worse outcome. This is, I think, the biggest problem. Um, even if, you know, Jaroslav Kaczynski decides he's going to kind of retreat and, and, and be the, you know, sort of oversee these things, it's not, it's, it's going to be a real problem. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'll try to be very quick. Um, well, yes, I do not believe that Hungarian scenario will happen, but this, this Trying to move in this direction is destabilizing. Again, I lived through that 2006-2007. It takes a lot of energy out of you if, if you are living in this kind of slightly heightened atmosphere of, of uncertainty. Um, so that's what I worry about, but maybe it will not happen. Um, um, uh, now, uh, Francois's question about the voter turnout, again, you would get the Nobel Prize in social science if you figure out this one, as, as Alex uh, indicated. but. Um, one thing very important to remember is that this is not a passive society. This is a very active society which obviously achieved tremendous success. 
despite of all those various governments, this is this growth, this the success of Poland comes from people doing things, working very hard, right? And so, the, you know, being an anthropologist, I'm beginning to think that this is something, something happened historically that you have a different uh, cultural um, script of social engagement. Mm. You certain things you do, certain things you don't do. I am working now on the book on the Polish civil society where I'm arguing this is not true that Polish civil society is weak. We have tons of evidence, but often it takes very unconventional forms that are not recognized by standard sort of methods of social sure. science. So that there's something there, but elections are not interesting. Yes, this is this something that falls out of this cultural form. Uh, Polish left, well, the, the biggest issue is, the, you know, uh, original sin, right? And that's, that's as Pete, I guess, suggested, and that's particularly Miller is the embodiment of this original sin. So when once he finally disappears, maybe things will start moving. Um, uh, but it is also the problem which was mentioned here, which is, I think, tremendous, which is the uh, aligning uh, economic and soft social leftism, if you can call it this way, in a country that is so traditional. Right? So that's the issue. Now, uh, on women, I, I don't have a good answer. I, I don't know. This, this may be coincidence, simply. Right, because you know, the, the in in in, in uh, of course, Shidwell understands women's issues completely differently, or to a large degree differently than uh, than uh, Novatska or or or, or uh, the prime minister. So it is. Uh, I I am not sure I, I how to explain that. It may be just a, a coincidence. Um, Finally, Kaczynski as a leader behind the scenes, um, well, we don't know, right? Maybe he will take the position of prime minister, which kind of is in the cards now. Uh, but if not, uh, yeah, he, he kind of likes this kind of demonic presence behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take, I think we've got time for another round. Elections aren't interesting. Okay. Um, just to introduce a bit of drama, the uh, Polish ambassador confirmed about 20 minutes ago that they sent the London results off to Warsaw, but Warsaw hasn't yet confirmed that it's received them. And that's the, that's the final, that's, that's 60,000 votes, so that could swing, that, that could swing, potentially, quite a bit, not the left. In, in, in where are they going to go? Where, where are they counting? In, are they allocated here? To in the London. Oh, Warsaw. Are they, are they, are they stuck in, Warsaw? The, the in the ether somewhere? Are they allocated to a particular... This is the one the embassy. This is embassy. Well, he said he said sixty thousand. But, but it's a professional pro professional uh, vote, so it will count on national scale as well. But everybody's joking that all those votes will be to pay us out because <laughs> because for <laughs> last year, yeah, anyway. Farmers um, <laughs> get tax breaks. So <laughs> no, um, so the <laughs> question about the... But just to say this, because there was another information that Corvin, in order to make it, would need about 120, 130,000. Oh, is it? So okay, right. Enough. Yeah. And the, the Zjednoczona Levica would need even more. So yeah, no, that's, that's it. And if, that's they it. if they don't announce them in 26 minutes, then they're also yeah. in Nye Vajna. Yeah. Um, with, with, <laughs> with regard to the left, I'm just a little bit uncertain about this narrative of the fact that the left's association with communism uh, is the reason for its um, lack of success. The original sin that you mentioned, I don't think that's necessarily the fact that Miller or Krasniewski were members of the Communist Party, because many people, many of the left's constituency still looks rather favorably upon, upon the communist legacy. It's all of the catastrophes that the left has embroiled, in, embroiled itself in gradually over the course of the last 20 years, rather than necessarily, yeah. and, and in fact, it's the left's failure to capitalize on the positive aspects of the communist legacy to many, in many people's um, consciousnesses that yeah. is a, that, that, that is a, that, that, that is a problem, rather than its association with communism per se. And with regard to Razem, I mean, the, the, the thing is that the, the part of the success that Razem um, achieved after its non-leader leader, because leader, it has, conceives of this horizontal model of politics. Uh, spoke at the uh, prime ministerial debate on Thursday was that he spoke intelligently and sensibly and concretely about economics, which is something that left left wing leaders haven't spoken about really much in Polish politics so far. So he said sensible things about progressive systems of taxation and about corporate taxation that uh, that the left had completely failed to to work with previously. So in fact, 
the, the Zandberg's ability to combine a sort of a liberal agenda with uh, a, a fairly uh, radical socialist uh, economic agenda is, is something, I think that combination is something that could emerge in, in, in Polish politics over the course of the last few years consequentially. So that, the, the bridging of that gap is what people will be, maybe this is wishful thinking, but this is what people are, I, I suppose, trying to, trying to achieve. Okay, we can no, come back yeah. to that. I, I, can, I can imagine there'll be some interesting um, I've got, um, uh, well, a, a question that, that, that is uh, maybe quite interesting in, in our context here in London, although we don't have yet the, the results from London, but we did have results from, um, from um, uh, Iceland. Uh, so um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a question to, to all of you, but maybe also to, to Anne. Um, why is it the case that, that Polish authors abroad have voted the way they did? I mean, I suppose that the results from Britain are not going to be uh, very far from from the results from, from Reykjavik, which were, um, there were 834 voters um, who took part in, in the elections, and um, Cookie got 210, and, and first and then second was peace with 194 votes and then the third was how many um, peace one 194 and then the third was cotton with 146 <laughs> presumably our poles who live in Iceland they, they've recently gone over to work or because there isn't yes. an established uh, they would be Okay, so um, but I think that the results in, in London and maybe you know they, they will be um, different in, in the sense that the third platform will get more support here, but still I, I really would um, uh, wouldn't be surprised if 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 they were uh, if they weren't you know similar at least in terms of the support for cookies. Okay, um, got one more. Okay, so we've got the left again and polls, um, polls abroad and their voting <coughs> patterns, um, which was supposedly a big issue last time, but I think you 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 didn't think it was that important last time. No, because sorry, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Was a, does that want to jump in before? Okay, so maybe. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Miha, when I talked about original sin, I wasn't talking. Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't precise. What, what I mean is not the the ideology of the left or the programs of the left, but the sort of presence of nomenclatura um, in the various places in the system that is not transparent enough, and for many people it's very uh, unnerving. Uh, and this is something that Miller simply symbolizes, that, that presence of hidden structures of mm, influence, yeah. particularly in the economic area. Although <coughs> Poland is in a much better situation than about anybody else in terms of, of having this, this problem in the post-communist countries. So that's what I mean. Um, well, I guess with Iceland and Reykjavik and Cookies winning, this is mostly <coughs> people who are, this is the protest vote. Uh, there is this phenomenon well recognized in the literature of long distance nationalism. Diasporas vote always more nationalistically than the, the people in, inside of the country. But in this case, you have uh, rather a protest vote, because Corbyn, for the young people whom I know, a few who say that uh, Corbyn is a cool guy, uh, it is a protest vote, because if you ask them what, why, what, what they, they cannot much say about it. It's just a rebellion. And, and, and the phenomenon of rebellion is extremely important. We mentioned it several times. There's, there's quite, quite a few people just voted against something without a clear sense of what they're voting for. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Alex or yeah, Corbyn is quite a cool guy, right. whether you vote for him or not. Um, it, I, I think the, um, um, yeah, I, uh, the thing about, I've no idea why people voted the way they did in Reykjavik, and I've no idea how London voters voted, but I think we should have a sense of proportion about this. There's a huge amount of, of, of interest um, devoted to, to, to um, how the migrant community votes because it, it's kind of t totemic. Politicians pay a lot of interest to it. You know, parties come over and campaign within, you know, to London and 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 um, in the migrant Polish migrant community. Um, but this is not because <coughs> the people who vote in 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 the UK vote in particularly large numbers. I mean, I don't know. The, 
the figure 60,000 was bandied about. The 700, 800,000 poles live in Britain. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a tiny proportion. It's not the numbers that are important, except possibly in the Warsaw constituency. It's the symbolism that these people represent. Okay, everybody has somebody in their family um, that, that, you know, is probably working abroad and doesn't want to be, you know, a lot of these people don't want to be working abroad and therefore these are, this is a constituency that, that has to be addressed by politicians. So I think, I think we should kind of get hung up on the numbers. Now, on the left, I, I kind of agree with quite a bit of it and then there's bits of it I don't agree with. That's, that's quite an interesting analysis. Um, I think you're right that the, the, the left's association with, with um, communism is not the reason that, that, that the left is, is, is so weak, although there is something here still that, that, that needs to be grasped, okay? I mean, I think you're right. It's, it's to do, because, you know, the, the left was phenomenally successful, you know, in, in, in the 2000s up to, to 2005. Leszek Miller, who's, you know, the real kind of, the guy that's getting a good kicking here today, you know, won 40% of the vote or whatever it was in... in, in 2001. So, you know, obviously that didn't stop them from being very electorally successful. It was actually, you know, what that 2001 to 5 government did. And it was, it was, it was the kind of movement that you've got this time, which law and justice were beneficiaries of. And the last time you really had that anti-establishment mobilization was in 2005. And Civic Platform were actually beneficiaries of this. Yeah. You know, let's not forget, Civic Platform was all for the Fourth Republic, <coughs> okay, in, t in, in 2005. They kind of, you know, they rode this, this anti-establishment wave themselves in 2005. So I think you're right, and, and, and I think you know, the, the, the collapse of the left is, it dates back to that period of, of government in 2001, 2005, and it's precisely those things, the, the out of touch, the arrogance, the, 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 the corruption in, in, in many cases of, of those kind of networks. Um, just, just sort of one thing about the association with communism, which is important. I still think that there's a kind of a visceral um, dislike of any association of radical leftist neo-communist politics among Poles, which is toxic. So, for example, Zandberg, who was mentioned as the, you know, the, he's the, the new messiah, there's been lots of them, of the left, um, was, you know, on, shown on the Polish news with a picture of Karl Marx. Okay, now that kind of thing is going to immediately put a ceiling on the support I of, think that's of, more among the right wing no, than I among the average. I disagree with you. I, I, I think that there's still a toxicity about that, mm -hmm. okay, among among polls. And that that is a real problem. That kind of association with 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 that kind of you know neo-communist type politics. In order to be successful, the left has to kind of move away from that. That's why the Democratic Left Alliance was successful. Now just on your final thing about you know the the, the, the left led on, on economics and this is why Zandberg did so well. The problem is um, the left talked about economics a lot, okay, um, uh, and, and, and used some, you know, very radical slogans, had a very leftist critique of economic transition, got, got elected to power, and then continued to proceed with highly orthodox economic policies, as of course did law and justice, let's not forget when it was in power in 2005, 2007, and if it can find a way of finessing these, you know, very expensive pledges that, that, that it's had, which were, were key to its electoral success, I suspect the law and justice will also, next government will be, will be very economically orthodox because every Polish government is basically economically orthodox. And, and, and so, you know, talking leftist economics is, is not something that's, that's unique, I don't think, to Partia Razem. You know, people have heard this from leftist politicians before. They've got into government and they've, they've, and, and, and they've not implemented it. And yes, he did very well in the debate. And yes, you know, he was a, a great star. And where did it get them? Three and a half to four percent. Well, that's from financing from the budget. That's the ceiling. That's that's what I think is 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 that's that's what a radical left is you know is is, is capable of getting. And why, did, why did they not throw in their lot with um, United Left? Or why did United Left not pick them up and, and put the left both together? Which... For precisely those reasons, because they said these people, these these so-called leftists, the people who got into government, look at the kind of policies they pursued, you know, neoliberal or whatever the boo word is, you know, leftists use about orthodox economic policies. Um, they, um, you know, they, they talk about criticizing the church, but, but actually when they get in office, they kind of do deals with them. And anyway, you know, Miller and people like that is a crook. You know, Palicott's a crook. We don't want anything to do with it. We're a pure leftist party. And there's, there's some appeal to that. There's some appeal to that, I think, to, to, to a section of voters. But I think it's very small, and I don't think it's a basis on which the left can, can, can develop a, 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 a mass. Okay. Um, do you 
you want to come? Yeah. I, I have a different view okay. um, uh, uh, to uh, Alex's interpretation. I, I think, to, to put it bluntly, that the, the uh, uh, left uh, alliance up to that point, they were winning not because of Miller, but against, uh, despite of him. That he was there, but they were winning because they, as it is well described, and I think rightly in the literature, they have managed to convince people, <coughs> and for a good measure they were, a catch-all party. This was the party of business for a while. This was a party which was uh, appealing with different sort of uh, parts of its uh, um, slogan machinery to different, different electorates. And they managed to, to convince them, for various reasons, uh, that they are the most efficient and uh, the, the party that delivers. And on the other hand, solidarity, which you could see here, particularly in 2003, could have won, but lost because of its internal fragmentation. So if you put those two factors, the efficiency of a certain kind, until they collapse under the weight of their own corruption, <laughs> and, and uh, a, a, a certain and a fragmentation of the solidarity side, that, that was the effect. Part of it was, to some people, it was mm -hmm. the left message because nobody else was carrying it at that moment. And sorry, if I can just quickly add, I think Jan's right. I mean, I think that's, that's what you're saying too, is that really the left really didn't talk much left-wing economics in Poland. The right talked yeah. left-wing yeah. economics, yeah. but the left didn't. Yeah. Okay. That's not true. I think we know, I think we know yeah. where we disagree. <laughs> right, I'm going to, I'm, of course, the time, we've overrun, we've gone on quite a long time by the standards of our events. I'm going to offer the last word to Tomek. Um, he wants it. What, sh what shall I talk about? <laughs> what would you like to hear about? <clears throat> Whatever you well, like. in that case, I'll, I'll, I think that's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>